All right, this is number five from the 2013 Calc BC exam, and it is a ultimately a separable differential equation problem. But first of all, we're going to use it to do a couple of things. Um, so we're given dy dx, and we're told that f of zero is negative one. First thing we're going to do is evaluate this limit. Limit is x approaches zero of f of x plus one over sine of x. Try to evaluate this directly. You would substitute in, get f of zero plus one, but f of zero is negative one, so that's zero in the numerator. And then sine of zero is zero. So we get zero over zero. That's an indeterminate form. So L'Hopital's rule applies. So by L'Hopital's rule, we know that the limit uh, that we were given is actually equal to the limit of the derivative of the numerator, which is f prime of x, over the derivative of the denominator, which is cosine. Um, and now I need to figure out what f prime. I actually know at this point I'm not going to get an indeterminate form because the cosine of zero is not zero. Um, it's actually one. So I need to figure out uh, the derivative at zero. So that's going to be dy dx evaluated at zero, negative one, which is negative one squared, with quantity two times zero plus two. And that evaluates to two. So the limit above is just two over one, which is two. And that's part A. Part B is Euler's method. I feel like you should be happy if Euler's method shows up on the exam because, you know, it's just this algorithm. It's nothing too tough about it. I always make a table. So xy delta y, which is f prime of xy delta x. The main thing people forget is to multiply by delta x. Um, so the point I was told is 0, negative 1. Uh, I need to use two steps of equal size to get to 1 half from 0. So each of them is going to be 1 quarter or 1 fourth. So to find delta y, it's going to be 1 fourth. And then I'm going to plug 0, negative 1 into dy dx. So I get, uh, well, actually, I already did that in part a. I know it's 2. Uh, but it's the quantity negative 1 squared, which is 1. And then 2 times 0 is 0, and then plus 2. So 1 times 2 is 2. So in this case, it's just 1 half. 1 fourth times 2 is 1, one half. Um, so x becomes 1 fourth because I add delta x. And my new y value is my old y plus my delta y, so I'm adding those two quantities to get negative one half, and I recalculate. So don't forget delta x, uh, and I substitute in, so I get uh, the quantity negative one half squared, which I know is one fourth, and then times two times one fourth, which is going to be one half, plus two. So. Depending on how you want to write your answer, you could uh, actually write that f of 1 half is approximately negative 1 half plus this thing that I just wrote. And that would be fine because you don't have to simplify things. But uh, I'm going to simplify it anyway because that looks really ugly. Um, so that actually works out to 5 over 32. So it's 1 fourth and then 1 fourth is 1 16th and then 1 half plus 2 is 5 halves. So 1 16th and 5 halves when you multiply them, 5 30 seconds. Anyway, now I need to add those together. So I could say that f of 1 half is approximately, it's really important that you use the approximately equal to sign or symbol. Uh, the negative 1 half that we had plus the 5 30 seconds that is the change. So we get that. Or if you prefer, which I'm guessing most of you do, we can actually uh, work it out and get negative 11 over 32. And the final part is finally to separate and integrate. So we have this. Uh, so we separate right away, get dy over y squared equals uh, the quantity 2x plus 2 dx, uh, throw some integral signs there, and uh, make that the integral of y to the negative 2 dy. I just prefer to have it uh, in the numerator when I do this, it makes the power, reversing the power rule a little more obvious. So negative y to the negative 1 equals x squared plus 2x, and then don't forget plus c. Uh, I like to solve for c here. If, if it had natural logs in it, I would wait, but this doesn't, so I'm going to solve for c at this point. So I know f of 0 is negative 1. That tells me that uh, negative, negative 1 to the negative 1, which is annoying, um, equals c because x is 0, so everything on the next drops out. So uh, c is just 1. So let's go up here. So negative y to the negative 1 equals uh, x squared plus 2x plus 1. You might notice that's actually the quantity x plus 1 squared, so you could just switch to that right now, um, which actually would make your life a little easier in like one second. 
So dividing through by a negative, and then taking the reciprocal, I get this. The question here doesn't mention the uh, domain, but I think the domain is important, and I think it's easy to find. If you want to see one that's not easy to find, check out uh, the AB exam from this year, number six. I don't see how you're finding that domain by hand, but they didn't ask for it, so I guess uh, guess you didn't need it. Anyway, uh, this I can factor into this, and that has a vertical asymptote at negative one, so I should pick the part of the domain that contains the initial condition. So I should say that it's that solution where x is greater than negative one. And that's the little problem. I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.